Hello, in this video we're going to take a look at rotary machining using vectors in Carveco Maker. Now to open a rotary model it's a little bit different to a normal model. If you go to new model the option won't be there to create a rotary model. So what you need to do is go to the file drop down, go to new and then select rotary model. This will open up a new dialog box and it asks you for your dimensions. So first of all, this is the dimensions of the stock or the piece of material that you're going to put onto your rotary machine. So let's say for instance that I have, let's say a two inch diameter piece of material and the length of this is going to be let's say 12 inches. Then you have the rotary axis. So this can either be in the X axis. So as you look at the machine from left to right, or it can be in Y. So from the front to the back of the machine. Now this is very important, obviously, because then you'll get the wrap right on the rotary. So select whichever one applies to your setup. And then you've got the units of measurements, either in imperial or in metric. You've also got resolution. So this, in this particular instance, is only really important for the quality of the simulation. So when you're done, select OK. And this will open up a rotary model. And you can see that it's round, unlike a normal model in Carveco Maker. Now to unwrap this, what you need to do is go over to here to toggle rotary or flat. So if I click that, it goes back to being a flat, so it unwraps it. And I can click it again and it will be wrapped. If I unwrap it and then take a plan view of this, what I'm going to do is just draw a line from there to there. And what I want to do is machine this line but have it wrapped around that rotary. Now this is really easy to do. All that you need to do is just do a 2D toolpath. So exactly the same as how you would do a normal 2D toolpath. All of the 2D toolpaths work on this rotary. You just need to go into them and it will automatically wrap around. So if I go to create a profile toolpath, And I'm going to do this along the line. And let's say that I want to go, let's say 0.1 of an inch. Select a profiling tool. Let's use a quarter inch ball nose. And then I need to set up the material. If I don't set up the material, I'll pretty much have no idea how this is going to look because I want to simulate this. So if I set up the material, what I need to do is make sure that the material thickness is half of the diameter that I originally set up. So the original diameter that I set up was two inches. So that has to be half of the diameter, which is one inch. So always remember the material thickness is half of the diameter. And make sure that you have material Z0 at the top and the model position at the top also. Then select OK. Now if I rotate around, you can see that it sets up this round material block for me. Now I can wrap this again so I can see what it looks like, but you won't see the material block because it's exactly the same size as the relief. So in that case, if I wanted to, I can toggle the front relief off and it will just show that material block. And then I can calculate. I can turn off the vectors because don't want to see them and if I rotate around you can see that that's creating this line going around the piece of material that I have. So if I go over here now and then right click simulate the toolpath you can see that it's created the toolpath for me. Now you can also see here 
how it's not coming to the correct point. That's because I need to extend the line, that's all. Now if I wanted to, and I wanted to see this work with the tool, what I can do is go to simulation control bar and then press play and it will show it. Obviously this is going quite fast because it's just one line. And I can also do exactly what I would do with a normal simulation. I can go and I can apply material. So let's do that again. Let's take a plan view and you can see that I've got my line. What I'm going to do now though is I'm going to extend this line. And I'm going to create a few copies of this. And I'll just trim this off. So let's say, there. Quick way to do this, if you press shift down on the keyboard, you can just drag across. And then I'll just delete the other vectors that are remaining. So open up the profile again. And this time I'm going to do it over all of these vectors. Click calculate. I can wrap that if I want to. And take a look on the inside. I could turn the relief off if I want to. Show the material. Like so. And then let's use the simulation control bar again. Press play. And now you can see this wrapped on the rotary. Now, as I said before, all of the 2D toolpaths work with vectors and you can use them in much the same way that you would a flat piece of material. So here you can see a bunch of gingerbread men vectors and I've changed the diameter of my rotary. This is now three inches. And what I want to do with this is create a rolling pin and I want to use V-bit carving on this. Now you can, and it will just wrap around the rotary. So if I go to toolpaths, open up V-bit carving, select the gingerbread men, and I'll select a tool, let's say a 90 degree V-bit, click refresh, wants to go down 0.33 of an inch, so I'm going to limit that, let's say 0.1, and then I'm going to make sure my material set up, as I said before, half the diameter, so 1.5. So half of the three inch diameter that I've set up, make sure they're both at the top. And then let's turn off the vectors and calculate. And there you can see, I'll just turn off my relief. And it's basically giving me all of the toolpaths there. So if I were to simulate this now, I'll just fast forward this a little bit. And there you can see it's created my V-bit carving on the rosary. So the only thing to do now is to save the toolpath out. And you do that exactly the same way 
as normal. You just go to save toolpaths, but when you do, make sure that you select the rotary post processor for your machine. So that's how to do a rotary toolpath using vectors within Carvco Maker.